Hi everyone and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Today we're going to be presenting tips and tricks for troubleshooting common problems in AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. My name is Ashley and joining me today is my colleague Dave who will be teaching you these handy tips and tricks as well as Bryce who will be helping to answer your questions. We'd like to thank everyone for taking some time out of their day to be here. We're very happy to have you and hope that you enjoy the webinar. Before we begin, we'd like to take a couple of quick polls. And the first one that we have here is, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? All right, so it looks like for a lot of people, um, this is not your first webinar, and for a few of you, it is your first webinar, so a very special welcome to everyone. So we have another poll. The second one is, which product are you using? All right, so we have a nice, nice mixture here. A lot of people are using AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT. We have some AutoCAD architecture in there and Civil 3D and a few people that are using other products. So we have a couple more polls. Um, our next one is what version are you using? Great, so we have a number of you using 2016, a few 2015, 2014, a couple with uh, 2013, and some with older versions. All right, so we have one more poll um, right now, and the last poll that we have here is what is your primary role? Great, so most of you are uh, end users of the software, a few CAD managers in there, and then we have some IT and owner and uh, other. Great, so thank you for taking the time to, to fill out those polls. So a little bit about us. Um, my name is Ashley, and I'm a technical support specialist based out of Boston. Dave, our presenter, is also a technical support specialist based out of the Manchester office. And Bryce, who is also joining us, um, is a technical support specialist based out of our Lake Oswego, Oregon office. Again, we're very happy everyone's here and uh, we'll get started shortly. So some of our upcoming webinar topics include introduction to 2D drafting tools on February 4th, working with line types in AutoCAD on February 11th, point clouds and section planes in AutoCAD on February 18th, and productivity tips and tricks part one on February 25th. You can watch past webinars anytime by visiting our Autodesk YouTube channel, and you can also download the data sets from Box if you'd like to, um, to follow along. To register for Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series, you can visit our landing page. Also, please visit and encourage your peers to visit our AutoCAD community forums and uh, share your knowledge. If you're interested to share your feedback with the AutoCAD development team, we encourage you to join the AutoCAD Customer Council, where you can give feedback and help influence the creation of great <coughs> releases. If you'd like to get involved, you can email us at autocad.beta at autodesk.com or autocad.it.council at autodesk.com. Thank <laughs> you. 
And before we get started, please feel free to leave questions in the chat window, and we'll answer them as soon as best we can. For answers that we don't get to in the chat window, we'll address after the webinar. This session will be recorded, and the links are available in the registration reminder you received, the chat window, as well as the post-webinar survey. Please remember to visit the Autodesk Knowledge Network, knowledge.autodesk.com, to check out many helpful articles, as well as service packs and hot fixes. And now we're getting into the exciting stuff, the uh, actual presentation here. So today's agenda is troubleshooting, general troubleshooting and file corruption. At this point, um, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dave, who will be helping who will be teaching you these uh, helpful tips and tricks. So, Dave, it's all yours. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, and nice job for your first webinar experience. So, uh, happy to have you on board on the team. Uh, and thank you all again for attending. Uh, this is a little bit different topic than we've done in the past where we're not really talking about how to use AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT, but really just uh, troubleshooting um, problems that you may experience with AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, and try to give you some ideas on how to resolve them. So it's great seeing uh, that we have a bunch of CAD managers and IT people on there, but uh, as you know, 55% of the people that answered the survey said that uh, you end users of the software. And while we're always more than happy to uh, help with tech support cases, maybe some of these tips and, and suggestions um, may help you avoid having to get someone from tech support involved in, in fixing a, a potential issue with the software. So um, basically, if you've ever filled out a or filed a, a tech support case with somebody here at, at Autodesk, you're going to notice that there's a series of questions that we will always be asking unless you are very clear about what the issue is up front. So th things that uh, we'll try to do is try to um, isolate or uh, narrow down the problem into different groups. So we're going to try to find out if the issue that you're having is, is drawing related, uh, is it a problem with your user profile? And we're going to go into each of these things in more detail as we go through. Is the issue permissions related? Is it a problem with the network? Uh, is it machine specific? Right? Is it caused by some other application that's on the software, either a third party application that's built on top of AutoCAD or something else? We've actually had problems in the past where um, having a iPhone plugged into your computer was causing problems, which uh, is a very unusual thing, but it, it was a real situation that uh, we had to figure out. Uh, is the issue with the installation or the deployment of the software? Right? And is it just a performance-related issue? So we're going to try to narrow down problems based on on these types of questions. Um, so when you see a you know when you see a response to a tech support case and, and we're asking you know can you reproduce it in another drawing? If you open it up in another machine, does they have the same problem? If you take a file from the network and save it locally, do you have a problem? It's, that's trying to figure out what bucket to kind of look at to figure out where we need to focus and try to resolve the issue. So the way that uh, I'm kind of going through this, and uh, because, uh, first of all, because I didn't want to break my computer, uh, and because I don't want to be showing customer files, which uh, anything sent into Autodesk is, is confidential, so we don't uh, want to show customer files here, uh, a lot of this is really going to be theoretical in nature. So when, I'm not going to be showing drawings and uh, how to fix a particular drawing uh, unless it's a file that uh, I've had myself. Like I'll show an example at the end uh, where I'm using a tutorial file, but uh, we don't want to be showing uh, live customer um, intellectual property uh, on, a, on a situation like this. So we're going to talk about things theoretically. And the, the way that th this presentation will go is I'm going to basically be talking about the issue, you know, what, you know, what some of the symptoms might be, uh, try to provide some troubleshooting tips and some potential solutions. And many, if not all of these slides are going to have links to particular um, 
knowledge papers or websites. So if you haven't downloaded one of these presentations before, you probably do want to download this particular PowerPoint so that uh, you'll be able to easily get to all of these links. And you may have noticed that uh, you're finding more and more information available on the web uh, with how to deal with particular issues because we've been creating lots and lots of material and once uh, we create a white paper or, or a knowledge base article that gets published to the web and, and is available to the public for, for looking at things. So for example, in this, in this uh, first thing we're saying is the issue drawing specific? So the, it, this can be anything from you just can't open the file, uh, you're getting a message saying that the draw, drawing needs recovery, you either seeing objects that uh, shouldn't be there or not seeing objects that should be there, or just something just isn't working right. So we're going to you know, ask you to do things like, well, if you open up a new drawing and you run that same command, does it work in the new drawing? Or, um, you know, um, if you unload xrefs, you know, are you still having the problem or, or something like that. Um, and there's a white paper here, so I'll go ahead and open up this uh, knowledge base article about fixing corrupt AutoCAD files. <clears throat> and again, this is going to cover a lot of the same stuff that I just talked about. You know, maybe you have slow performance, uh, uh, you may have an unexplained increase in file size, um, jerky cursors, it can be all kinds of things. So, you know, it can be caused by lots of different types of issues. And then we give you a number of different ways to kind of fix them. So, you know, the most basic way to fix a AutoCAD file that's corrupt, it'd be using the audit or the recover command. Uh, so, you know, we want to go through things like that. Sometimes purging reg apps will help. Um, sometimes, uh, uh, you may need to W block the file from one drawing into another file uh, because there's something that just can't be fixed. So there's lots and lots of different ways on um, fixing a file, uh, including uh, something that I'll talk about a little bit later, uh, which is uh, a specific issue with DWG line types. But it was good to see in the poll that most of you are using 2015 or 2016, so uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the uh, DWG line type issue as, as much as somebody else uh, using an older release would. Um, so we'll get back to that uh, series of slides in a little bit. So um, I, I'm not going to go through each and every one of those possible things on how to fix a corrupt file, but uh, certainly you want to run audit on a regular basis um, on your drawing files. If you're working in a drawing for you know eight hours or more, you should probably want to run audit on the file. Uh, and if you see anything odd happening to the file um, or to the performance of the of the machine, you want to run audit or recover to check the file for corruption. As uh, finding something early is going to make a big difference uh, instead of potentially spreading corruption to other drawings or, or causing crashes. Um, you may have a minor bit of corruption in a file and it's, you know, you can get away with it, but if that gets worse and worse and worse, eventually it's going to cause the crashes or not being able to open up the file. Okay. So the next thing is um, uh, whether or not the issue is user profile related. And this can be a, a a pain for especially for IT people because uh, you know creating a new user profile can can be uh, you know a good task, but uh, if you have things issues like uh, you're getting unknown command or you're missing ribbons toolbars. Uh, etc., uh, then it, the issue may be profile related, especially if you're storing files uh, like uh, menus or toolbars up on a network drive. Um, maybe you know, you're having a problem with that. So one of the things that we t typically suggest is trying having somebody else log onto the machine using their user credentials, somebody that's not having a problem, uh, see if the software works properly then. Uh, maybe having a system administrator log into the computer and see if they can test and see if they have the problem. If if it works for those other people, then you know that it's basically a profile issue. So you need to either rebuild the user profile. Uh, sometimes, however, just doing a simple reset to default is uh, is the solution. And this is really probably the the best thing that's 
been introduced into AutoCAD for a number of releases, uh, and regardless of the version. So my screen capture here is showing AutoCAD MEP. Um, I happen to be uh, the, one of our MEP experts, so uh, I like using MEP screen captures. But you'll see uh, in, in any of the more really recent versions, uh, if you open up, you go to your Start Menu All Programs, Autodesk, and you pick um, you know, one of the AutoCAD uh, folders, there's a setting or a command there called Reset Settings to Default. And in many instances, just doing that simple process, which takes a few seconds, you know, has to re restart AutoCAD, that'll fix a lot of problems. Um, a lot of times what happens is somebody migrates from a much older release of AutoCAD to the latest release. So you, you just jump from 2010 to 2016, and you're trying to migrate all of those settings across, and maybe there are new settings in 2016 that are getting overwritten or something, um, and that, that can cause problems. So, um, you know, if, if you're having problems like that, like things aren't working, uh, a reset settings to default will put the software back into its out-of-the-box state without any customization, and then you'd have to redo the customizations that are necessary. Um, but it's a, it's a great tool, uh, and it, it does fix a lot of issues. Okay. Um, so this next one, and, and a lot of these are going to be very similar, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of overlap with, with uh, whether it's a network issue or a profile issue, et cetera. But um, sometimes, you know, the, um, you're having a problem with permissions. So you can't open a file. Again, some commands don't work. It crashes, et cetera. Um, so if you're working on a network, uh, or files on a network, uh, and you're having a problem, uh, maybe creating, uh, it's a get, you know, saving the drawing, and you're getting TMP files being saved instead of a DWG file. Um, the first thing we're going to ask you to do is copy the file to a local drive and do the same kinds of tests. Uh, if the file works properly on the local drive and it doesn't work in the network drive, then there's some type of a permissions issue, or it's a slow network issue. Uh, so. It, that's something basically that you need to get your IT uh, person involved and in, and in checking to see if you know somebody else can work with it if it's if it's on the network etc. Um, but some of the things that work often uh, would be turning off your user account control settings to never notify that can fix a lot of issues and also if you just pick on the ACAD exe and right click on it and select run as administrator. Um, that will fix some some of these problems as well, so that uh, even if it's not installed with full administrative rights, uh, it at least will allow the, the software to run with administrative rights. Okay. Uh, so related to that is is it network specific? So you you may be getting uh, path related issues, crashes, not seeing things like tool palettes or plotters or plot styles. You can't save again. Um, so again, you want to you know see if if the issue um, works on a local drive as opposed to on the network. Uh, check things as basic as network cables and firewall settings. A lot of the software today uh, does ping various sites uh, for licensing or uh, if you're using Autodesk 360 or using um, some of the other tools that are in the software. So firewall settings can cause problems. Um, but if, if the issue is network related, then that's not something that Autodesk is going to be able to resolve. You really need to get the IT department involved. Uh, we can't troubleshoot networks. We're not uh, network engineers. We're software um, technicians. So um, you need to get IT involved if, if the issue is network related. Okay. And I hope you're enjoying the little pictures, by the way. We went through a lot of effort to find some of these images that are on the slides, and I'm sure a lot of them can be related, <laughs> you, can, you can relate to. Um, so next one is, is the issue machine specific? So um, getting errors, crashing, um, you know, things just aren't working right. Um, Certainly, if, if the installation fails, you know, that's certainly going to be something we need to deal with. Just JIT is just-in-time errors, fatal errors, uh, et cetera. So um, basically, you know, there's a number of things here. First of all, check your, your version. Uh, make sure that you're running with the latest um, service packs and hotfixes. So I actually put uh, 
some links in here to AutoCAD 2016 um, downloads. So that'll bring you, uh, if you pick on this, <clears throat> it'll bring you right to our downloads page where you can get things like service packs. You can actually filter based on the version that you're running. So if you're running 2015, yeah, you pick on that and it'll filter this down to just showing uh, things that are available for 2015. Make sure you always pick on see more here. If you see in you know, hot fixes, you can see there's 17 hot fixes. Um, so if you're having a problem with uh, you know geolocation, you know there's a hot fix here that will help uh, with with that issue. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're you have certainly service packs installed and uh, any hotfix that's necessary. And we do try to uh, roll up uh, hotfixes into service packs. So if something, uh, we release a service pack or I mean a hotfix uh, early on in the release and uh, we come out with a service pack, we'll roll that service pack in. But uh, you know, keep an eye on the, basically on the dates as to what something is. And if there's a newer hot fix out than the service pack, you want to install that hot fix. Um, but these uh, these pages here are invaluable for for troubleshooting a lot of these issues. Um, the other thing here is if you do have a crash and not just lock up because locking up uh, won't give you the option to do this. But if you have a crash and it says, you know, do you want to send the error report into Autodesk? Uh, please do, and please include your email address. Because we can uh, look up those crash reports, and we can get a lot of information from those reports. Uh, everything from you know, what version of the software you're using to uh, what display driver you're using, um, some information about what the last commands used were, etc. And I, I just want to show an example here. Um, Basically, this is a crash report from, from me, so uh, this is one of my own reports, and it will tell you that I was using AutoCAD MEP 2016. Um, it was actually a defect, and it was uh, fixed through a technical solution. So, uh, you know, we can, certainly if it says that it's, there's a fix, that's great, because we can say, okay, you need to install a service pack or, or something like that. Um, if it doesn't, then we can get into some more information so I can see what my latest um, commands were that was that I was using, what drawing I was in, and there's a uh, XML file that will tell me all the software, Autodesk software that's installed with what versions there, that are installed, what your operating system is. Right? I have a lot of Autodesk products installed, so <laughs> this is kind of a very, very long list. Um, but then we can get into things like um, you know, what display driver you have, so is my, my graphics card and driver. And if you're running an older graphics driver you know, or a non-certified driver, we can figure that out. Um, so there's a lot of information that can be um, pulled out of these reports. And the other thing is it's also used for determining what gets fixed next. So if there's a lot of people crashing when you're you know, waving your hand, we're going to try to work on uh, fixing that so that when you wave your hand, it's not going to crash. Right? Obviously not waving your hand, but um, you know, if we get uh, a thousand reports on one issue and one on another issue, we're going to work on the thousand issue um, problem uh, sooner than that single issue. So um, in addition to installing uh, hotfixes and service packs, um, you want to make sure that your display driver is up to, up to date and certified, preferably. And uh, there's many, many issues that are resolved by um, updating a graphics driver. Um, it can be anything from uh, having weird lines showing up all over your drawing to being, you know, to uh, things being jerky to poor performance to whatever, and inst sometimes install installing the latest certified driver will make a big, big difference. And there's a link here for um, looking for your display driver, and basically all you do is you go in, in here and you select on um, the fact that you want to look at graphics hardware. I'm looking for AutoCAD you know, 2015. I'm running Windows 7 64-bit, and I've got an NVIDIA card, and just hit Find. <clears throat> And then I can come down and say, okay, we've got Quattro 5000, 
and it'll tell me here uh, what the graphics driver was that was tested and you can just download the driver directly. So, um, you know, this is all stuff you can do yourself. Uh, if, it, if there isn't a certified driver, then basically uh, you want to go ahead and um, just go to the NVIDIA site or wherever it is and uh, install at least the latest driver that's available. Um, a couple other things that, that can work uh, for machine issues is certainly you can just run a repair on the software. Um, basically, you go to control panel and uh, select on the application and you run repair. Uh, that will um, sometimes fix the problems. If you've gone through all these other things, updating the drivers, doing a repair, uh, doing an uninstall and a reinstall, then sometimes we'll ask you to do what's called a clean uninstall. And this is a, a little bit more um, involved than just uninstalling and reinstalling. Basically, you're going to uninstall all Autodesk products, um, including uh, you know, render libraries and anything like that. Getting rid of all the remaining folders and, and files that get left behind. Uh, and then before you um, start reinstalling, you know, cleaning up your temp folder, logging in as administrator, and then, um, you know, performing the install. So this is a, a much more involved process, but sometimes it comes down to that. And we, we try not to lead with that for sure, but uh, sometimes a clean and un uninstall and reinstall is the only way to fix a problem. And that can be based on any number of things. It could be a, an update from Microsoft uh, that is causing the problem, and when you do the, the clean uninstall reinstall, that'll you know, sometimes fix, fix those issues. Uh, and speaking of Microsoft, um, sometimes we also will have to reinstall or uninstall and reinstall things like um, the Microsoft.NET framework and the C++ redistributors. Um, just to, to get those to the right version, right state. Maybe there's something that was corrupted in those. But we are heavily dependent on the Microsoft tools. So um, sometimes we, we will have to go ahead and do things like that. So there's a lot on that slide. <laughs> um, all the links will be on the, in the PowerPoint that we'll up to upload. So uh, you know, just go ahead and do that. Um, this one is a little bit more challenging. Um, is the issue caused by an application conflict? So uh, again, can be lots of different symptoms here, and um, you know we can have you start in diagnostic mode, which will you know uh, you know only run the things that you want to run. Um, but the, the the simple thing here is uh, you know if you have application A installed on top of AutoCAD and We'll, you know, we have to sit there and say, well, if you uninstall application A, do you still have the problem? And if you don't have the problem, then the issue is with that other application, and you need to work with that company to figure out what the issue is. Uh, sometimes, again, just an uninstall and reinstall will take care of it. Sometimes there's some kind of other conflict. Um, but again, we can't troubleshoot third-party applications, so um, we need to just isolate where the problem is and at least you know, point you to the right place. Um, and certainly, um, you know, updating drivers and such uh, can help with this, but uh, you know, if it works without the application and you have any problem with it, then then you need to work with that other company. <clears throat> um, is the issue with installation or the deployment? Obviously, if the install just doesn't work, it's obviously an issue with the installation. And we have a separate team here at Autodesk to help with installation issues. So if you don't have an IT group or something um, that can help, uh, certainly just uh, you know, logging, uh, going to our website, um, you, can, you can actually get down into the troubleshooting area and um, you can start either a chat or a case with our installation team uh, so that they, you know, they can help you with, go through these issues. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if the installation works, but you're still having problems, then we get things like, you know, doing the reset to default, which I talked about, running the repair, or in all, if everything else fails, doing a clean uninstall and reinstall. Uh, very seldom does it go beyond that. Um, However, you know, I have seen cases where there's just a problem with Windows and you have to do a repair on Windows or something uh, or even an, a reinstall of Windows, flattening the machine and starting over again. But that's a very unusual situation. Uh, usually one of these other steps will take care of that problem. 
performance related issues. So, um, you know, screen flickering is just slow. Um, you're trying to re um, change views and you crash or something like that. Um, even just a jerky mouse. Again, we have that link to the certified graphics hardware. So make sure that you're running the latest uh, hardware um, graphics driver. Um, make sure that your computer uh, conforms to the uh, minimum system requirements. So if I open up this, all right, I can say, okay, I want to see what the system requirements are for AutoCAD 2016, and that'll tell you, you know, what, um, how much memory you need, and you know, and all of this uh, again is a minimum. It's not, uh, you know, if I have this, it's it's going to work great. If you're working on a 200 megabyte file, you're going to need to, you know, more graphics or uh, more memory, more everything than if you're working on a 100 kilobyte file. So. Um, Keep that in mind. You know, these are minimum requirements, not uh, going to work for every situation. Um, also, turning on or off hardware acceleration can help. So, uh, what I mean by that is, if it's on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on. And to, to turn um, in 2015, 2016, you basically can right-click on the icon on the bottom of the status bar and get to 3D uh, configuration, or just type in 3D config at the command line, and there'll be a slider for hardware acceleration for on or off, and um, just you know try it either way and see if, if it helps. And if it does, you know if hardware acceleration off works better for you, leave it off. If turning it on works better, leave it on. And obviously, updating any kind of drivers, and it includes mouse drivers and such. So um, you know, it's not relate, uh, limited to just the graphics driver. Okay, so that's kind of going through some of those initial steps. And next thing I want to talk about is just file corruption. Uh, so I, I already talked a little bit about um, you know running audit, but uh, <clears throat> so. Some, some ideas about when to check for file corruption. So things are becoming slow. You're getting a lot of crashes, your cursor sticking. Uh, problem is only happening in, in specific drawings. Other drawings work just fine, even though they're, they're similar in size and complexity. Or the file unexpectedly gets to a very large file size. And that's a very specific problem. And, and I'm happy to see that most of you are running 2015 or 2016 because there's a, a fix built right into the software. But if you're running 2012 to 2014, there's actually a hot fix, and I'll go ahead and open this up uh, to, to help get rid of this issue. And the problem um, occurs in these older releases of the software. If you uh, had imported a, a DGN file, from uh, with complex line types into a drawing at some point somewhere and what it would do is it would leave behind all of these um, line types and other graphics or data items um, that would balloon the file size and over time the file would get bigger and bigger and bigger and if you copied anything from a, one of these files that has the issue into another file or xref it into another file, then that file will also be, uh, start to bloat. So there's a couple of hot fixes here for the older releases. And in the 2015-2016, see if there's a, no, it's not a screen capture here, but there's, um, in the purge command, there's a um, drawing purge. Oh, no, that's a different one. Um, there's a, uh, in the purge command, there's a, a new option called uh, purge orphaned data or something like that. I forget exactly what the, the term is. And that'll get rid of all these things. I've actually seen files go from 20 megabytes down to 50K um, just by running this hotfix. Um, but if you're in the older releases, you basically um, clean your file and you make sure that this DBX file is installed on the machine and that'll pre prevent the issue from spreading from one drawing to another. So it was a nasty little problem that we were having, um, but uh, you know, should, shouldn't be happening in, in new files. But if you, the, in the easiest way to see this is just type in the line type command 
And if you see all kinds of line types with really weird names, it's most likely this DGN line type issue. So run that run purge with the deleting orphaned graphics or objects on in the newer versions of AutoCAD and the older versions uh, getting the hotfix and cleaning up the file. Okay. So just some of the causes of, of you know, files becoming corrupt. So it, it can be an issue with the network, you know, latency in the, on the, the files going back and forth causing an issue. Um, you could have a problem with your hard drive or your RAM. Um, operating system issues I think would be less likely, but uh, certainly a power surge can cause a problem. Um, third party applications um, can you know, cause file corruption. Um, I'm not saying that they always do, but that, that can be a cause of, of corruption. Um, you know, anything created by a non-Autodesk um, application, you'll see that uh, when you open up a file that was created by something that was not an Autodesk application, but it, it created a DWG file, you'll get a warning saying that it was not created by an Autodesk application. It doesn't mean that the file's junk, but it uh, it's just a, a you know, kind of a little flag saying if you have a problem with it, then, you know, you probably want to run recover on the file um, or you could do it um, what we call export to AutoCAD, which will strip out any um, non-Autodesk data, uh, stand, non-Autodesk non native data and save it as a, as a standard DWG file. Um, and if you ever crash while working in an application, now, I kind of wish that this feature wasn't in there. It, it, you'll get an option to save the drawing file. That's really a last resort type of option. Um, if you are saving a file during a crash when AutoCAD is shutting down, AutoCAD's in a really bad state. And saving the file in that situation is almost always going to either corrupt the file or give you an invalid file. So please just save often. Uh, don't just rely on autosave either. Actually hit the little save button on a regular basis and run audit on a regular basis so that you're cleaning up your file. And if you happen to be one of those people that didn't save all day and you're crashing and you you know need to save an entire day's worth of work, yeah, go ahead and hit that uh, you know save file when you crash. Um, but immediately make sure you at least try to you know run audit or recover on that file before you do anything else. Um, it's it really is just a last resort. Uh, it's not meant there to to you know save your work every time there's a crash. And I did put another link in here just to that file corruption, you know, how to go through and and deal with the, all of the issues that you may have. Okay, uh, there's one other thing here that I wanted to cover. Um, occasionally, you'll get a drawing that was working just fine all along, and this is one of the tutorial files for AutoCAD MEP, but uh, you, working fine all along, and all of a sudden, you go one day, and instead of it opening up in 10 seconds, it now takes 10 minutes to open. Uh, occasionally, there will be an object that becomes invalid or, or whatever um, that isn't caught by an audit or, or a recover but is causing the issue. And the only way that I've actually come of or found to kind of fix this issue, because um, if you just W block the drawing out into another drawing and you're still going to have the same problem, is to start isolating the drawing into pieces. So in this example, I I'm going to use the W block command, and I'm going to W block the data from each quadrant here into another file. And you can go ahead and delete the objects in this file as it's doing it, just so you know you get everything. Excuse me. Um, so you get all the all the data. Obviously, make sure all your layers are on and things like that. Um, and then what you do is you open up each file. So I open up this one, it opens up fine. I open up this one, it doesn't. Uh, you know, it takes a long time, whatever, um, and you can start breaking it down into isolating where the problem is. So, in, if I go back here, so and say that this one here opened up slowly and the other five opened up fine, so you take that drawing and you break that into pieces, unless you see something that's really obvious uh, as to what the, what the issue is, and then again, you open up each of those, 
say, okay, now I'm breaking it into a smaller piece. And you keep working your way down until you find the problem. So in this particular uh, instance, uh, this was with a different file, but uh, there was an issue where the, these conduits in AutoCAD MEP think that they were connected, but they are showing is not connected, and that was causing the issue. So deleting these two elbows and redrawing them fixed the problem. I had another case where there was a polyline that was, I don't know, a foot long, but it had, you know, 10,000 vertices, and that one polyline was causing the problem. Um, there was nothing physically wrong with the polyline, but it, AutoCAD was trying to process that, and it was taking forever. So deleting that one polyline from the file fixed the issue. And then once you find out where the issue is, you basically open up the original file again, zoom into where the error, where the problem is, delete that that object, and then redraw it or replace it with something else. So it's a hopefully that doesn't happen very often to you because it is a time-consuming thing, but um, it is a, a good way to figure out you know, where the issue is because it's very hard to find elsewhere. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I was going to talk about this or Ashley, but uh, there's also some additional resources that I, I have in here just for you know general knowledge. So um, the, Autodesk, the Autodesk Knowledge Network is a fantastic uh, collection of data. Uh, please check that out if you have any kind of issues with with the software. Um, you know, do a search. There's a, there's a lot of great information, and all of this stuff that I just showed is up there. Um, I put some links in here about uh, you know troubleshooting, licensing, um, some issues with Windows 10 and .NET 4.6, uh, installing the license manager, and just preparing the system for installation. So just some stuff that, uh, especially if you're obviously doing you know, initial installation or licensing that, that you'd want to be familiar with. And I think at this point, we'll kick it back to Ashley, and we'll do another um, poll, and then maybe answer some questions if there are any. Yeah, it looks like we have uh, one question in the chat window that we didn't so we can ask that. Um, so we're just going to ask you one more quick poll um, before we get to any Q&A. And that poll is very important to us. Did you learn something new today? And that's great. It looks like it looks like most of you said yes. You did learn something new today, and that's that's always what we hope for with these webinars. That's the purpose of them. So that's wonderful. Thank you for um, for participating in that poll. Um, so Dave, it looks like we have actually. I'm sorry, Bryce answered that question, so we're all set. Um, and it doesn't look like we have any any additional questions. So with that, um, we'd really like to thank everyone for taking the time to to join us today, and we really look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. And uh, again, th just thank you very much, and uh, I hope we do get to see you. And uh, you'll see me probably back in about a month at the at the next uh, tips and tricks. Actually, Dave, I'm sorry, if we have time just for a couple questions. They just came in last minute here, if that's okay. Sure. So, um, Stephen is asking, I'm sorry, Julian is asking, should we install AutoCAD-specific hotfixes into AutoCAD vertical products? Yeah, and actually, that's a, that's a great question because this just changed recently. Um, up until 2015, uh, I believe, the... AutoCAD's vertical hotfixes included the AutoCAD general hotfixes, but now what you need to do is install the AutoCAD hotfix or, or AutoCAD um, service pack and the vertical specific ones. So you definitely want to install the AutoCAD one first and then the vertical. All right, and Dave, looks like we have a couple more here. When you uh, when you need to uninstall all Autodesk software, does the software going to re-register, or do you need to unregister? 
Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, typically, know that you do not have to re-register the software. Um, some of that stuff is kind of hidden, and um, I think the uh, article about uh, uh, doing the clean install does have information in there about uh, you know if you're having a problem with licensing and how to get rid of the licensing so that it can start over again. But if you don't do that step, everything should stay there and, and show up as being licensed again. You shouldn't have to re-register it. All right, and I'm not seeing any other questions, so it looks like that's uh, that's it for today. And uh, actually, okay, we have another another few coming in last minute yeah. here. Yeah, we can. <laughs> we have a couple of minutes. That's fine. Yeah, we have some time. Um, so Simon is asking, how do you get rid of education stamp? New AutoCAD doesn't show them; only older AutoCAD. Yeah, and that's absolutely true. Um, there was a decision made in, I believe it was 2015, that we were going to basically let uh, people in the education community use the software and, and not have that plot stamp on. Um, but in older releases, um, there, there really is no way to get rid of the plot stamp. Um, if you have access to 2015 or 2016, simply open up the drawing in that version, save it, and then it's gone because it, it is stripping out the plot stamp. Uh, but in older releases, there's no way to get rid of it. Okay, we have another question. Um, is Revit replacing AutoCAD? <laughs> Absolutely not. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> there's, there's, uh, I can't see a way that uh, Revit uh, will replace AutoCAD. There's a lot of people obviously moving to Revit um, based on what application they're using. If you're certain if using doing architecture design, structural or MEP design, there's a lot of people moving to that. Uh, it, but it doesn't cover other disciplines, and there's no plans to, you know, stop working on AutoCAD architecture or, or standard AutoCAD. So, um, no, it's not replacing it. And I'm not seeing anything else, Dave. It looks like, looks like that's it. Okay. All right. So, uh, Actually, um, we have another one that just came in. Yeah. Is, uh, is Revit replacing AutoCAD MEP? No, uh, same same answer. There are a lot of people using AutoCAD MEP, and um, it's near and dear to my heart since I started with it back at SoftDesk uh, many many years ago. And uh, you know, the, um, we're not going to make somebody move from AutoCAD MEP to Revit MEP or anything like that. It's it's a choice of 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 you as to which application you're using. Same thing for architecture. And David, it looks like we have another one. What are the resources for Windows 10 for troubleshooting? Um, I, I would say just you know using the Autodesk uh, Knowledge Network. Um, there was one article I think I, I pointed to specific to Windows 10 and, and .NET 4.6. But uh, you know as we find issues uh, with Windows 10, uh, we'll be creating knowledge base articles. Uh, for those issues and posting them. So um, kind of what we say here is search early, search often, and um, I, I would recommend doing the same thing out in the community. And thank you from Brazil. We like you in Brazil too. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, there's a question there about AutoCAD running on Windows 10. Yes, it does, uh, as long as it's uh, either you know one of the new versions, um, and uh, you may have to have the service pack installed. So if you have AutoCAD 2015, absolutely must have service pack one installed, or service pack two, whatever it is. <clears throat> Yeah, and um, so I see a, there's a question about uh, AutoCAD for Mac, and AutoCAD for the Mac is not the same as AutoCAD um, for the PC. I mean, some of the same steps for troubleshooting would be there, 
as far as uh, file corruption and things like that. Um, but it is a different version of, of the software. Um, it's actually built for AutoCAD on the Mac. Um, and there are specific knowledge base articles, you know, for the for that application as well. So I think at, at this point, um, what we'll do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, pause the um, presentation here, and we'll try to continue answering some of these questions online. Um, but at this point, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the presentation. And uh, thank you all for attending, and uh, hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.